It's Jan Howell. This is part two of the DIY denim quilt series. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to sew these blocks together to make a quilt top. Now I'm going to show you how to make a quilt sandwich and use two different methods to tie these quilts. I'll be giving you lots of helpful tips, so make sure you watch the whole video. And if you haven't watched part one, you might want to go back and watch that. This is such a fun way to upcycle your denim jeans and make something that is unique and cozy. I'll demonstrate how to use quilting frames and I'll be showing you how to do it without quilting frames. You're going to need your finished quilt top cut to the size that you want. These quilts can be made any size. The first hand tying quilting method I'm going to show you will be using quilting frames. Now I know a lot of you don't have quilting frames and if you are not interested in that just skip to the next method the lap quilting method but this is something that you might want to look at i know a lot of you may not have access or have quilting frames this is kind of the old school way of doing this but i love it there's just something about having the quilt out have friends and family sit around a quilt and you can have these whipped up in a couple hours. I have very fond memories growing up playing under a quilt. These are my grandmother's quilting frames. It's been a good minute since I've had a quilt up in my living room and I'm actually really excited. So let me show you how it's done. You can choose either way, whichever is best for you, especially if you don't have access to quilting frames. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested how to make a set of quilting frames. They're really easy and my husband could do that tutorial for you. Let's go over what you need. You'll need a batting. I like to use a polyester um, bonded batting. They come in general sizes and the size will be on the bag. You can get these at your fabric stores and they're not really expensive. Let's talk a little bit about the backing fabric. I prefer using a nice flannel fabric you can, there's, there's a couple options. You can buy the flannel by the yard or you can buy a sheet set or a flat sheet, the measurement that you need. Just depends on the size of the quilt that you're making. You'll want to get a good durable piece of flannel. It might be a little bit more expensive, but it'll be worth it in the long run. I actually prefer to buy a flat sheet and go that route for a few reasons. It usually ends up being a lot less money because a good flannel fabric by the yard can be kind of pricey unless you're buying it on sale. A, a sheet, however, you can buy it, the flat sheet in a sheet set, or you can just buy a single flannel sheet. The other benefit of using a sheet is that most fabrics are not going to come, are not going to be wide enough for the bigger quilts. If you have a bigger quilt, you're going to have to piece two strips of flannel together to get that width that you need. Of a sheet, you, you can just cut it to size or even just use the quilt and then cut off the extra. However, on this quilt, I am using fabric yardage because I came across this cute orange plaid and it, I just, I, when I saw it, I said, this would make a really cute backing for my denim quilt. It usually takes about six yards of fabric for this size of a quilt. And then you'll need to make a seam down the middle. So you'll need to figure out the length of the quilt and the width. I have cut the backing three inches on each side. So six inches bigger than the quilt top. Knowing how wide you need to cut those two strips to equal the width that you need. If it's a plaid, you're going to want to make sure that the plaid lines are lining up. The other items that you'll need is, of course, the yarn or thread that you are going to tie the quilt with. I prefer using just yarn. You also can use crochet thread. This is my preference, and I think this will the contrast on the blue will be really cute. You'll need a few straight pins and thumbtacks. Now, you can buy thumbtacks that are for quilting and they are they are a big thumbtack i prefer these and i might even need to get some more you you can get away with using smaller thumbtacks but i prefer these they're a lot easier to put on and to remove you'll need a pair of scissors and you'll need a good yarn needle 
and I have several because when I do these kinds of projects, there are usually three or four of us sitting around the quilt and I want to have enough for my friends. You'll need a measuring tape and these little pliers come in handy or you can use a cut up yoga mat to help grip that needle and pull it. We'll go over that in just a minute. So are you ready to see how this is done? I am so excited to get this going and hopefully it won't be up in my living room too long. Here are my quilting frames. Like I said, they are my grandmother's and they have seen a lot of quilts. My husband's used them for other projects. As you can see, they have paint and stuff on them, but they're still good to go. So I've just roughly set out my frames. When you're setting up your frames, you want to place two of the boards on top that are parallel to each other. So this board is on top of this board and the other one on the opposite side is on top. And the reason we do that is because when you, you can only quilt so far out onto the quilt and then you need to roll the boards in. And they both, those boards that are on top are the, are the boards that you're going to roll in to get you closer to the center. And you can either roll from only one side, but I like to roll from both sides. That way more people can work on the quilt. The first thing that you'll need to do is to take your backing and your quilt top, fold each edge in half and mark the halfway point with a pin. Now I'm not going to have to mark this because I've already sewn it together and I know that that is the halfway mark. So these other two ends, I'm going to fold the backing in half and mark that folded place with a pin. I'll set that aside for a minute and do the same thing with my quilt top. These are 10 foot boards and I have marked with a pencil that halfway mark between the board. If you have frames that, that don't have that, make sure you mark that halfway point. I'm going to take my thumbtacks with me and we are going to place the backing on the frame first with the wrong side facing up. So let's find that halfway mark and find the halfway mark on the frame. Line it up and pin it to the board. This is what I need is my utility apron on. I can't believe I don't have it on. I usually wear it for everything. I'm going to put my thumbtacks in there. If you're going to bind the blanket using the backing fabric, which I'm going to show you how to do with this, you'll need to go in three inches from the fabric like I have here and then pin it. So I'm going to give myself a good three inches and then maybe just roll it and then tack it down. If you're going to bind with a different piece of fabric, you can go ahead and just pin that about a half inch or onto the board. So I've gone around starting with my center points, aligning them with the center point on the board. You want to make sure that you're not stretching it. Just get it so it's laying flat and then we'll put on the clamps. Now I forgot to mention that you will need four C clamps like this to clamp the boards together. Now we're ready to add the batting. As you can see, this is a very thin, low loft batting. And when you take it out of the bag, it, it is a little wrinkly, but that's okay. We're just gonna flatten it out the best we can. And it's gonna overlap quite a bit, but that's okay. We'll trim that off in just a bit. Now, if you choose to make the blanket without the batting, that's just fine. I do like the feel of these quilts with a little bit of batting and those little bubbles will smooth out once we put the top on. So I'm going to figure out which way this goes. This is the long way and this is the short way. So of course you want the right side facing up. Let's go ahead and trim off some of that batting to make it easier. Halfway point with the halfway point of my top piece. And there's already a pin right at that point. So I'm gonna just put a tack so I'm going to line up that to the other side. Yeah, I really do like these heavy duty thumbtacks so much better. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get those. They're kind of hard to find. Now 
Now I'm going to show you how to tie it with yarn. Now you can tie your quilt with, of course, just yarn. And that's what I'm going to use, this orange yarn. But you can also use crochet thread. You can even, this is a thicker gauge, and you can also use a thinner one if you wanted to. So take your yarn needle. This is not just a tapestry needle for like cross stitch. It has a very pointy end and it has a big eye for yarn. And I'll put the link in the description below for these needles. They can be a little hard to find as well. Now, if you're having a difficult time threading, of course you can just use a regular um, needle threader. See how that's kind of hard to get in? I'm gonna show you a trick on how to do that a little easier. Just take a piece of regular sewing thread, fold it in a loop, thread the loop through the needle I. Take your yarn, thread the yarn through the loop of the thread, and you can pull it through. Voila, isn't that the coolest thing? So just keep a piece of thread handy on the quilt frame. I'm going to double thread this needle. I'm gonna give myself a good three to four feet. And let's go over to the quilt and let me show you how to do that stitch. I have pulled up a chair. I have all my tools handy. I have my ball of yarn, pair of scissors, my threaded needle, and here are a few handy tools to have. This is a little pair of pliers to help pull the needle out if it gets difficult, and a little piece of yoga mat also is handy to help pull the needle out. So on this quilt, I'm just going to quilt one stitch in the corners and one stitch in the middle. I'm going to start on this right square, taking a little stitch in the middle. I have my hand underneath so I can fill the needle and know how big the stitch is gonna be. Now sometimes it can be a little challenging to pull that thread through, that's why I have those little pliers, or you can use a little piece of yoga mat that grips the needle and really helps pull it out. Make a tie, left over right, right over left, and pull the yarn really tight. Go up to the next place, which is in the corners, and take a little stitch. And you're just going to continue going to the left and with, you don't have to cut the thread yet, we'll do that in a minute. Make a little loop off to the side, take your needle under that thread, pull it tight, make a loop on the other side under the yarn and pull it tight. Now go down to the next middle and you'll just continue going left as long as you have thread. And then cut your yarn. You can make those as big or as long as you want. I'm gonna make those just a little bit shorter. Make sure they're all even and the same length. When you get to a point that you can't reach any further, you'll need to roll the boards. So let me show you how you do that. I'm going to bring in my husband to help me. We're gonna take out the tacks that are closest to this board, maybe a foot or so. And you wanna keep the, the quilt taut while you're rolling it and even. So it's good to just put your leg or your hip against that board, that bottom board. Loosen up your clamp. And then we're going to just roll that a few times. We'll probably go maybe one more. There we go. You want to keep that pulled back and taut while you put the clamp back on. And you can roll you can roll from both sides, or you can just roll one side all the way over. It just depends on the situation that you have your quilt in. And we're ready to continue. All right, I have finished tying the quilt. It didn't take very long at all. I'm now going to take the quilt off the quilting frames. Sometimes these thumbtacks can be kind of difficult to take off. You don't wanna break a nail. So I like using, just taking a butter knife, 
going underneath and put those in my pocket. By the way, I love my utility apron and I have a pattern and a tutorial showing you how to make these. I use them in the house all the time. I use them in the garden. Oh wow, well, this turned out so cute. Now let's go over how to tie a quilt without quilting frames. This particular quilt top is smaller than the one that I demonstrated on the last video. These are six by six inches instead of eight by eight inches. And it's a smaller blanket. I'm going to make this for my dog's bed. I think he'll really like it, but it will be durable. I'll be able to wash it over and over again and have it still be nice. This method can be used on baby quilts, flannel, and other types of fabric. The blanket without using quilting frames, you are going to need a bunch of safety pins. I have found that it is worth your money to buy these crooked, bent safety pins. They're made for quilting and they work really nicely. You can use regular safety pins if you want, but you can get them pretty inexpensive and I'll put that link in the description below. So as you can see on this blanket, I have used a lot of safety pins. You'll need a pair of scissors. If you want to add a batting, you will need that. I like putting a batting between this denim quilt. It's just a very thin, low loft batting. It just feels better. It doesn't add a lot of bulk, but yet it is softer and you don't feel those lumpies on the other side. So if you want a batting, you'll need that. Another option is just to use a piece of fleece. Now, if you had to buy the fleece by the yard, that can be kind of pricey, but if you have a piece of fleece kicking around that you don't really like, it works really nice on these quilts. You can also use cotton batting if you wanted to, or like I said, no batting. Let me show you how to go about making a quilt sandwich. So I vacuumed the floor, of course, and I'm gonna put the backing with the right side facing down onto the floor. I'm going to tape the corners and the sides really well to the floor. And just make sure it's really flat. You don't want to pull it or stretch the fabric. And for this small of a quilt, I don't even think I need to tape the sides. Take your batting. This is a crib size batting and I will need to cut it down a bit. flatten that out. It was packaged up in a bag, so it does have a few wrinkles in it. Let's make sure it's flat. Take your quilt top with the right side facing up, and the backing is quite a bit bigger, but no worries. We can trim that down later. So I'm going to smooth that out. I'm going to throw a bunch of pins out. I probably won't need all of those, but I'm going to come to the center and poke my pin down. Make sure you're going through all layers. And I'm not going to pin in the center of the square because that is where I'm going to be tying the quilt. I'll work my way from the center out. Yeah, these pins are really nice. And you'll just keep the process going until you have it all pinned down. All right, I think this is pretty stable. I'm going to remove the tape. And since I'm not using the backing for the binding, I'm going to cut this all three layers, even with the quilt top. Now, if, I, if you want to use the binding, see how I've left three inches on each side? Let me show you what that would look like. You would trim off the batting, and then you would just use this. You could probably cut that down quite a bit, even half. You could fold that and then fold that again. I would probably do a smaller binding, about like that. And that was really simple to do that. And then you would just sew down the edge. So that's a good option, but I'm going to add a cute corduroy trim to that. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. So I'm just going to trim away the batting and the backing to match the front. It feels so cozy already. Now we're gonna get ready to tie this little quilt. 
you'll want to grab a yarn needle or an upholstery needle. I'm just using this crochet thread. You don't need a, a huge needle like you do when you're tying a quilt with yarn, but you need something that's long and durable. I'll choose that size and put the rest in my little case. So this should be pretty easy to thread, but sometimes it's, it's not. You can use one of these nifty little threaders that fits through the eye of the needle and you just put it in there and then pull it through. Or if, if you don't have one of these threaders, let me show you a handy trick. You can take a piece of sewing thread, regular just sewing thread, fold it in half and then thread it into the needle. Leave a little loop and then take the yarn or this crochet thread, thread it through that thread loop and then pull the thread through the eye and voila, see how easy that is to thread. So that's a, a fun little trick whenever you're threading even embroidery floss, this works. So give it a whirl. I'm gonna double thread my, a good amount of yarn, double it and then cut the ends. I'm going to put a tie in the center of each block. That's pretty simple and straightforward. On the other quilt, it's a little bit bigger and I'll show you a different method there. I'm going to start on this bottom right square and I'll take a stitch, just right in the middle. I don't mark it or anything, I just eyeball it. And this pulls through pr pretty easily. Leave a little tail and we're just gonna tie a knot. So left over right and under and pull it tight and right over left and pull it tight. So that's simple. We'll cut those in just a minute. Come to the next square in the middle. Take that little stitch. If you can get those stitches, maybe make those stitches about a quarter inch. Take your needle, make a little loop. Take your needle underneath and then through the loop and pull it. And then I'm gonna make a loop this way, bring my needle underneath and pull it. And go to the next block. So you can sit at a table or you can sit on a couch, whatever you want and tie up this quilt. So I will sew up the whole row or however long my thread lasts. You can make these little ties as long or as short as you want. I'm gonna probably go about that. That's it. And this is what it will look like on the other side. You, you, you know, you just see that little knot there. Once you get this all tied, I'm going to show you how to bind the quilt. I'm gonna show you several different ways step by step in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you are able to start saving some jeans and continue with this tutorial in part three. And if you're wanting other sewing videos, perhaps you're having trouble with your stitch on your sewing machine, I do have a troubleshooting video that you might really enjoy. So check out my channel playlist and see what you can find. If you like these tutorials, make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to check out the links in the description below if you have a question about where to find something or comment in the comment section below if you have a question or a concern. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day. Have fun sewing and we'll see you in part three.